Seventh chords or seven chords are the most common four note chords you're gonna use on piano, the most important to start learning. And essentially all we're doing is adding a seventh on top of one of our existing three note chords that we know. That will make perfect sense by the end. Now we can add a seventh on top of different chords, but the most important thing to focus on first is adding one on top of either a major triad or a minor triad. So that's what we're gonna concentrate on in this video. Learning what all those chords are called, understanding the theory clearly, and learning it all in a way that really practically helps us find those shapes on piano and memorize those chords. Okay, so we're gonna start from the note C as it's always clearest to learn chords in that key first. And then of course, I'll show you some examples of each chord starting from other notes afterwards. There are two possible types of seventh intervals that we could add on top of one of these chords. We have the major seventh and the minor seventh. Let's look at those first. The major seventh interval is the note that's one half step below the octave. If C is the root then, the first note in the chord, number one, from this note C, an octave is the next C up. And then if we come back or shrink the gap by one half step, that's a half step, isn't it? Because there's no black note between those notes. Um, we get the note B here. So that B is what we call the major seventh interval from our starting note C. If we count it up, it's 11 half steps away. It's just much quicker and easier to find it by coming back from the octave. This is a kind of seventh because C to B spans seven letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember after G we loop back around to A. Then we have the minor seventh interval, or as we often say, the flat seventh. We can find this by playing the note one whole step this time below the octave. So from C again, the octave is still C. We go down one whole step, which is two half steps, remember. That gives us the note B flat. So B flat still has the letter B in it, so it's still seven letters away from the C where we started and a kind of seventh then. There's more than one type of seventh. This one is now 10 half steps from the root. It's just quicker and easier to find it by coming a whole step down from the octave. If we have two possible chords down here, C major or C minor, and we have two possible sevenths we can add on up here, the major seventh or the minor seventh, then that gives us four combinations. The first one we're gonna look at is the major triad plus the major seventh. So here's the C major triad, and we add on the B, the major seventh. So the name for this combination is called a major seventh chord. So you just have to be careful what, when people are talking about this kind of stuff because they may be referring to the major seventh note, the interval from the root, or the name of the whole chord is also called a major seventh. These are the four notes in a C major seven chord then. C is the root or number one because that's where we started. E is the third because it spans three letters from the root, one, two, three. G is the fifth, it's five letters along, one, two, three, four, five. And as we said earlier, that B is the seventh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the first three notes is obviously the major triad structure underneath. So to recap what's included in that is, uh, well, the first one's the root, everything has a root. Then the next one is the third, and because it's a major chord, this is a major third. A major third being two whole steps from the root or four half steps. The next one is called the fifth, or to give it its full name, the perfect fifth. We often just say fifth for short though. A perfect fifth is seven half steps from the root. But if building those basic tries is completely new to you, then you should check out my how to start building chords video, which is linked down below. And then we have the major seventh on top. So like the formula for this chord is a root, a major third, a perfect fifth, and a major seventh. Just to point out quickly, when you see these written down, if you just see the three on its own or just see the seven on its own, that means the major three or the major seven. If we mean the minor three or the minor seven, we'll put the flat symbol next to it. We can also think of these chords as being built by stacking thirds on top of each other. Thirds use every other letter in the musical alphabet. So starting from C, here to here is a third, one, two, three, and then here to here is a third, one, two, three, and then here to here is also a third, one, two, three. But different kinds of third. So here to here is four half steps, as we just said, which is a major third, we already said that. And then from here to here on top of that 
is three half steps, one, two, three, so that's a minor third, and then from here to here is another four half steps, one, two, three, four, so there's another major third on top. And as a reminder, these chords are in root position, the original form of the chord. Now we know the four notes in that chord, C, E, G, and B. They can be spread around, around the piano and voiced in different kinds of ways. So for example, I might have a C here, a B there, an E there, and a G there. It's the same notes, just rearranged, so it is still the same kind of chord. So these theory things help give you the chord in root position, which gives you the exact notes, and then you've got to know those notes and, and how they can be voiced around the piano. People often think of major chords as having a really solid, stable, bright, happy sound. But when we add on that major seventh, it makes it sound a little bit more ambiguous. The beginning of this piece uses two major seven chords in a row, see if you recognise it. Remember to notice when we take the same chord type round different keys, so the same chord starting from different notes, although the range that you play it in obviously affects the sound, it still has the same kind of character and that's because of the intervals we use, because of the spacing of the notes. So if I play a few major seven chords, they're all going to sound like the same kind of pattern. A major seven, a flat major seven, E major seven, D major seven. Obviously all the notes are going to be different, but the spacing between the notes, the amount of half steps between the notes, the intervals will be exactly the same. The formula for the chord is the same. Let me do an example of that chord in A. So all we do is we take an A major triad to start with, which is this, A, C sharp, and E. Then we're gonna add on the major seventh interval. So let's find that. So we go to the octave, A to A, come down a half step. That gives us G sharp. We're gonna call it G sharp, not A flat, because um, A to G is seven letters, and we've already used the letter A, haven't we? So now we add on that G sharp to our A major chord. A major triad, we find the major seventh, a half step below the octave, and we add it on. This chord still uses every other letter from A. There's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, even though the C and the G are sharps. It's still the same letters, so that's still a kind of third, and that's still a kind of seventh. I'll do one more key. So here's a B flat major chord which is B flat, D and F. So we find the major seventh, we go an octave above. So there's the B flat and we come backwards a half step, down a half step from B flat is A. We add the A onto our B flat triad. And the same with this chord, it still uses a one, three, five and seven, every other letter, even though the B is a B flat. Those major seventh chords are really common in music and really well worth learning. The next chord we're gonna do is a dominant seventh chord. This one often just gets the name shortened to seven. So if we had a C dominant seventh, we'll often see that written down or named as C seven. This one uses the major triad again, but instead of adding the major seventh on, we're gonna add on the flat seven on or the minor seventh. So let's look at C major again. Here's our C major chord. Remember the flat seventh was a whole step below the octave. So there's C, a whole step below is B flat. So this is a C dominant seventh, often also just called a C seven. It's the same major triad as before. It has the same root major third and fifth, but now with a flat seventh on top. Notice how this chord still uses the same letters as the C major seven, the first, third, fifth, and seventh letters from C, only this time the B is a B flat and that just pulls it one half step closer. So now when we add on that B flat on top, the distance from this note here, the fifth to the seventh, is a minor third, so that's one, two, three half steps. So it's like adding a minor third on top of our existing major triad. When we add on that seven, it makes the chord sound a bit unstable, it cranks up the tension on the chord makes it want to go somewhere, so we often use these chords to pull to other chords. The tension in the seven chord helps set up the resolution in the next chord. But we commonly use seven chords in the blues as well.
and in that context sometimes we let that tension linger. So a dominant seventh chord then is a major triad with the flat seventh added on. Let me show you that in A and B flat as well. So our A major triad was here. Now we want the flat seventh, which is a whole step below the octave. A to A is there. Come down a whole step, gives us G. So that chord is A dominant seventh or A7. And remember, all these chords contain a one, three, five, and seven. So when they start from the same note, they're all gonna have the same letters. So A major seven had A, C sharp, E, and G sharp. A dominant seventh has A, C sharp, E, and G. Same letters, the G just had a sharp for the major seventh and G natural for the dominant seventh. For B flat then, here's our B flat triad. Let's find the flat seventh. There's the octave, come down a whole step, gives us a flat. So there's B flat seven or B flat dominant seven. Again, major seventh had A natural and dominant seventh has A flat, same letters. Those dominant seventh chords are everywhere in music in all different kinds of music throughout all different eras. They're really important to learn. The next chord is a minor seventh chord. So now we're starting to use the minor triad underneath. And for this one, we're also gonna add on the minor seventh on top. So C minor is C, E flat, and G. So now E flat, importantly, is a minor third, not a major third. C major had a major third, four half steps from the root, and C minor has a minor third, one, two, three half steps from the root. But it's still a kind of three, just a different kind of three. So it uses the same letter. That's why we call it E flat, not D sharp, because we still need three letters, C, D, E. This way, everything works together nice and smoothly. So a minor seventh chord then, adds on the minor seventh interval to the minor triad. So again, we look at the octave C, the minor seventh interval or the flat seven is a whole step below, giving us that B flat again, like we used in the dominant chord, but this time with a minor triad underneath. So this is a C minor seven chord. We can also think of this as stacking on another minor third on top of the minor triad. If the combinations and the names are starting to get confusing by now, the way I like to remember it is that the major seventh chord uses the everything major, the major triad and the major seventh interval. Whereas the one we're just doing now, the minor seventh chord uses everything minor, the minor triad and the minor seventh interval. Here I'm playing two minor triads, but if I make them both minor seven chords instead, you can hear it sounds a little bit richer, a little bit more soulful and colorful. That doesn't mean it's better, it's just a different option for a different situation. Let's look at our examples in other keys then. So an A minor seventh chord. Well, here's our A minor triad. And that flat seventh interval or a minor seventh interval, whichever you call it, is a whole step below the octave. So there's A, come down a whole step. We get G, add it on. So that's A minor seven. Something that may be confusing here is, whilst I'm playing the note G natural, the name of the note is a G natural, but the interval name is a flat seven. A flat interval doesn't have to be a black key. I know that's a bit confusing, but it's just a slight difference in the terminology between when we're naming a specific note and just talking about an interval. And then let's get to our B flat example. This is a B flat minor chord. So that's B flat, D flat, and F. So B flat major had D natural, B flat minor has B flat. That's the minor third there, the flat three. So we've got one, flat three, and five. And now we're adding on the minor seventh interval, a whole step below the octave. One whole step down from B flat was A flat. There's B flat minor seven. So those minor seventh chords are also really commonly used in all kinds of music. Over on my Patreon page, I'm gonna be doing a couple of companion videos to this one, where I'm gonna be going through all these chords in all 12 keys. And I'm gonna do that in a way so you can kind of follow along and try and find it and test yourself as you go. I do also have a PDF you can get from my website, which is a really helpful learning resource. It contains all this theory stuff that I've been talking about, plus loads more, um, how to build 18 common three and four note chords. There's loads of in-depth but clear information in there, and it also contains a giant glossary 
glossary at the back with nice clear graphics of all these chords in every key. Okay, the last one then, the last of those four combinations is the minor major seven chord. Now this one, you're not gonna use it quite as much as the other ones, it's definitely a little bit less common, but it makes sense to learn it when you're learning all this theory together. In terms of practicing though, so you can actually get them memorized and use them comfortably, I'd focus more on the other three to start with. Now the name, minor major seven, isn't the best name, it's a bit of a mouthful, but it is actually helpful because it spells out exactly how to build the chord. So you've probably guessed by now, it's the last combination. It's a minor triad, so let's look at C minor with a major seventh interval added on, which if you remember, was a half step below the octave. So we're in C, so a half step below C is B. The name of the chord spells out. This is called a C minor major seventh. So C minor major seventh. It's the major seventh you've added on to a C minor. So we have the root, the minor third and the fifth, which forms the minor triad part, and then the major seventh. Still a one, three, five, seven, still using the letters C, E, G, and B, just the E is an E flat. Or to think about that stacking thirds technique, we can think about adding a major third, one, two, three, four half steps on top of our existing minor triad. This chord has that more mysterious sound to it. It's a bit more dissonant. You might think, where are you going to use that? Well, it's actually almost the James Bond chord, but sometimes even these more dissonant sounds, when used in context of a piece of music, can sound really, really nice. This is a beginner piece I use in my lesson sometimes, and there's a minor major seven chord hidden in here. Let's look at that in A. So we had our A minor triad here, A, C and E. We add on the major seventh, a half step below the A. And then from the B flat, here was our B flat minor chord. We add on a half step below B flat, which is the A. Let me quickly try and recap this and sum it up to make it nice and clear. We've got four combinations here. We've got the major triad with the major seventh, which is a major seventh chord. Major seventh is a half step below the octave. So it's both majors, everything major, major triad, major seventh. We've got a dominant seventh chord, which often the name just gets shortened to seventh, for example, C7 or F7 or G flat seven. This one is a major triad again, but this time with the flat seventh or the minor seventh added on top and that is a whole step below the octave. Then we have the minor seventh, which is now a minor triad with the minor seventh added on, both minors, everything minor. And then lastly, we have the minor major seventh, which spells out how to build it. Um, that's a minor triad with the major seventh on top. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. You can click here next to learn about how we start fitting all our basic triads inside keys, which is a really important and practically helpful thing to learn. Thanks for watching.